Hello, I'm Adele. I'm Mr. Mark, and I'm currently teaching year four, for those of you who don't know me. I'm going to be sharing my favourite book of all time, which is Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams. It's a science fiction book, and it's essentially a book about a book. Um, it's a great read, and I found that I've loved, cherished, and relished it because of its underlying message, which is don't panic, all set out in the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy within the book. Um, it's set in a bureaucratic dystopian galaxy um, where creatures effectively rule the galaxy in a very ordered way, but seem to do it without any moral conscience. Um, I'm going to be reading a short passage for you so you can get the flavour of the book and hopefully you enjoy it. The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, volume one in the Trilogy of Five by Douglas Adams. Far out in the uncharted backwaters of the unfashionable end of the western spiral arm of the galaxy lies a small, unregarded yellow sun. Orbiting this at a distance of roughly 92 million miles is an utterly insignificant little blue-green planet whose eight descended life forms are so amazingly primitive that they still think digital watches are a pretty neat idea. This planet has, or rather had, a problem, which was this. Most of the people living on it were unhappy for pretty much of the time. Many solutions were suggested for this problem, but most of these were largely concerned with the movements of small green pieces of paper, which was odd because, on the whole, it wasn't the small green pieces of paper that were unhappy. And so the problem remained. Lots of people were mean, and most of them were miserable, even ones with digital watches. Many were increasingly of the opinion that they all made a big mistake in coming down from the trees in the first place, and some said that even the trees had been a bad move, and that no one should have ever left the oceans. And then, one Thursday, nearly 2,000 years after one man had been nailed to a tree for saying how great it would be to be nice to people for a change, a girl sitting on her own in a small cafe in Rixmansworth suddenly realised what it was that had been going wrong all this time, and she finally knew how the world could be made a good and happy place. This time, it was right. It would work, and no one would have to get nailed to anything. Sadly, however, before she could get to her phone to tell anyone about it, a terrible, stupid catastrophe occurred, and the idea was lost forever. This is not her story. But it is a story of that terrible, stupid catastrophe and some of its consequences. It's also the story of a book, a book called The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Not an Earth book, never published on Earth, and until the terrible catastrophe occurred, never seen or even heard of by any Earth men. Nevertheless, a wholly remarkable book. In fact, it was probably the most remarkable book ever to come out of the great publishing corporations of Ursa Minor, of which no Earthman had ever heard of either. Not only is it a wholly remarkable book, it is a highly successful one, more popular than the Celestial Home Care Omnibus, better selling than the 53 More Things to Do in Zero Gravity, and more controversial than Uli and Kaluthi's trilogy of philosophical blockbusters. In many of the more relaxed civilizations on the outer eastern rim of the galaxy, the Hitchhiker's Guide has already supplanted the great Encyclopedia Galactica as the standard repository of all knowledge and wisdom. For though it has many omissions and contains much that is apocryphal, or at least wildly inaccurate, it scores over the older, more pedestrian work in two important respects. First, it's slightly cheaper, and second, it has the words DON'T PANIC inscribed in large friendly letters on its cover. But the story of this terrible stupid Thursday, the story of its extraordinary consequences and the story of how these consequences are inextricably intertwined with this remarkable book begins very simply. It begins with a house. Okay, so we'll pause there for a little bit. Um, hopefully you enjoyed one or two of the underlying jokes within that reading. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to hearing from you about some of the books that you enjoy reading and ones that are really close to your heart. Okay, thanks. Bye.